Hello everyone and welcome to the Mouse House for this special playoff edition. We have a coastal final for NGS Division C East matchup between Phoenix Rising Citrine and the Nexus Kitty Cats. Uh, this evening, if you haven't noticed, I am also I'm always joined by my best friend Snagananas. How you doing? Doing good. Almost we've there also, for December. Almost. It's almost December. I keep thinking it is December to be honest. Uh, but if you also notice, we actually have been invaded by a cat. Uh, herself. Uh, we have Jinxie Cat with us this evening as well. Hi there! The, mm. the cat that has like eight dogs, right? <laughs> <laughs> I only have three, and I have two cats, so you oh, know. Okay, okay. I mean, That's Jinxie fair. Doge doesn't, it doesn't roll off the tongue as nicely, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a quick recap of the maps. Uh, the, the cats are the higher seed, so they had um, I think option. There was no coin flip. They elected for hero pick. So Phoenix Rising decided to ban out Infernal Shrines and Alteric Pass. And the cats banned out Towers of Doom and Cursed Hollow. With Phoenix Rising opting for us to go to Braxis Outpost. I mean, uh, Braxis Holdout. Not for the first Outpost. Match. We had that problem Not... last time. <laughs> <laughs> we had that problem last time. <laughs> 
All right. While we're uh, oh wait, 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 wait. Snag, we we're in the lobby, by the way. Oh, I missed the link. I did. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, real quick before we go in, is there any uh thoughts or or concerns we have for the map of Braxis Holdout based on these two teams? Well, we've seen the cats do the Braxis Holdout. You know, kind of double big blow up comps a couple times. So we'll see if we uh we get that again. I haven't been paying too much attention to Phoenix Rising and Citrine to see what they like to play, but it was their map pick, so I'm assuming they know what they're getting into and have a plan for it. I mean, I'm concerned for the cats if they like to go here often, just because nobody likes Braxis. So like maybe not in terms of the game, but just like 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 psychologically like are you guys okay you know do you need to talk to someone right yeah <laughs> hey Braxis is fun we like Braxis I I'm terrible at the game so uh, I don't feel the same way <laughs> okay we but, are uh, all... no I am very okay. excited cool <clears throat> um do we want to do let's do the standings real quick I think I had that working hell yeah I do I believe the cats were actually the number two C not the number one I thought limit break at number one but, alas, at the very least, they are number one or They're two. They're not here. And Phoenix Rising is the number four. That is correct, Snag. They are not here. So we have a battle of a high number one or two seed versus number four seed. Does anybody want to make any quick, quick hit predictions before we go into the first draft? Well, I think Giblets is going to die at least four times. Um, <laughs> I am hoping that Zombie throws Giblets as Garrosh. So that way... He can die some more. That's my quick prediction. All right, we're going in. Um, I really wish I knew more about Phoenix Rising Citrine so I can make some predictions about them. Just do what we do. Uh, I, can, we I, I can predict yeah. that like, like maybe Stoic is like wearing sunglasses as he plays this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, special screen ones, which the yeah. uh, the light, the blue light, right? The the yellow tint? Is that how that works? Right. Oh, I thought it was blue light. Is it blue or yellow? It, it prevents blue light, but I think the tints were yellow mostly on the blue. Oh, ones. okay. Yeah, fair, fair. PRC loves Anna. this map. That's actually much easier to say PRC. Yes, it is. I like that. I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't learn what a citrine was until I started watching Steven Universe. We're going to see that Rex Argon right out the gate. Very strong on the point, as you see. And then Gul'dan taken out by yeah the cats are on the uh, left hand side yeah i think we have casted these guys this uh, when in the regular season i think we've casted this matchup and i i do recall because i think i brought up the same point of like why are they banning out Gul'dan? but so and they're doing <laughs> it again and so that's that's what triggered the past memory i was like who bans Gul'dan? And i'm like all right it, it definitely happened the first time they played against prc maybe it's a comfort pick again i don't know a whole lot about them and i feel terribly but uh I spent a lot more time with the other friends. We're going to see Mark Zombie pick up that Johanna there. Good on the map just because she can uh, get. The, I mean, actually, I don't know. Is Johanna good on the map? Because I've heard yes and no from a lot of people. I'm not a fan of Johanna on this map. I'm not a fan of Johanna on any two lane maps just because it kind of defeats the purpose of a lot of her abilities. However, she is still a wall. And in a two lane map, if you are just going to push into people, it's hard to get past a wall. That's a fair point. Uh, uh, Cassia Stukov coming out here for Phoenix Rising. Now, Cassia, um, obviously the big hitter right now in terms of, uh, totally lost the word there for a second, auto attackers. Then of course, Stukov is the number one because I believe we still have the medallions in play for this series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty big, strong start from PRC. Nexus Cat's countering with the old man and the banshee queen Let's see if they get Yo, some I'm zone loving. control here not having to talk much this is amazing i can do all this so what do you think stuff. about the comp so far linehouse who's your who do you think is the next next band go five four. oh next band Diablo. hurry up no they already have joanna they already have joanna i terrible at this <laughs> gazlo oh that's right tur likes to play sonia with leap i forgot about that that is the thing that they like to do. I wonder if they're going to yep. pop up the gas okay. Now they're going to ban Diablo, though. As a point, though, yeah, I'll let you mention it. 
Damn it. Uh, Samuro actually, does they even play Samuro again? We don't, I, I feel awful not knowing anything about this team. Just wing it. Tell you exactly. Listen, I know that they play Cassia and Stukov for sure. If wow. I was PRC, I'm looking at, obviously they have last picks. They don't know they're off laner so they can get the win there. So they got to win the four man. Against what they're showing so far, I think you want some long range quick poke against the Joanna. There it is with the Tassadar. Gonna have to be careful though, because if he stays still for too long, you know, throwing down that laser beam, you're gonna get swept up. Um, yeah, both teams opting for the wall tanks here, with the Mei and the Joanna kind of filling the exact same roles of each other. Um, hard to kill, easy to kind of just run at the other team. I wonder if uh, we'll hopefully see some big snowballs this game from the May, even though I think the wall is probably the more optimal pick. So chat is informing that Asmochad is a Samuro player, and of course if your name is Asmochad, you naturally have to play Samuro, so that actually makes sense. I mean, if his name yeah. is Chad, I mean, way to, way to stick <laughs> to the lore of the name. <laughs> <laughs> As Lothar King says, of course it's Chad's. So that makes so, sense, Air Carling. Well, one thing I was going to point out is that uh, when we were talking about the bands, we didn't see Devo or Gazlo banned out at all. We're going to see Mathleo coming in as the last pick. And now Turd's got the Gazlo. Is he in a point, really, where, you know, like it doesn't really matter that the enemy team has the Gazlo or are PRC in for a little bit of a hurting? Because, I mean, Malphale and the Gazlo trying to get on that point, I feel like it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Yeah, I'll be interested. I'll probably be watching that lane matchup a lot. Uh, I think Gazlo should be able to win against Mouthy on the point if they have two turrets up there. And then it's really going to come down to is if Turd can predict the jump, like the the jump behind the hero from Mouthy to not miss his laser. Because that's a big deal to hit his laser, get the heal from it, and get the extra scrap from more turrets and shielding. But because Gazlo can easily put a bomb on his body. And so if Mouthy gets on top of him, he gets bombed, gets stunned, get a laser, more turrets. I think. Gazlo should win on the point. Mouthfield wins pushing, I believe. In theory. Well, yeah, uh, I have to see. I'm looking at this and I'm Mouthfield. I'm curious. I, I really want to know what they're hoping to do with it just because Nexus Cats, you know, they're, they don't have a this lot for, to get right. value from the percentage. They have the mm -hmm. Johanna. Uh, Let me know when you're locked on. I, I am there, sir. Hell yeah. But, uh, the other thing that Malfield does well is he clears very fast and he rotates. And you don't typically do that on this map. Uh, they don't yeah. have a second solo laner, so you don't have like a three-man gank comp. But just, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Ten seconds. Well, all right. We have on the left-hand side the Nexus Kitty Cats, the Doctor on Sylvanas, Mick Giblets on the Deckard, Mark Zombie on the Johanna, Arthur Now on the Orphea, and Turd Herder rocking that Gazlord. And on the red team, Phoenix Rising Citrine. We got Rain on the. Uh, May, Lomart, is that Lomart? Lomart. Lomart on the Stuka, Lomart. Ace Lomart. on the... We got there. Ace on the Tassadar, Stoic on the Cassie, and on the top lane, Asmo, Chad. Mr. <laughs> Chad himself on the Mouthiel. We got Arthur now at the top, looking to get a little bit of early pressure. Make See if he can make Mouthiel use an early tap. Just trying to get that soak, look for a couple of... Uh... Uh, like you said, looking for some poke, we're going to see the clear come out. The biggest thing right now, finding that XP. Nobody ever wanted to go for that 1v1 on these two lane maps. Because if you die early, then your team gets a really significant advantage. Yeah, and actually I think the other big thing about this Gazzo versus Malthiel matchup that I think really puts it in Gazzo's favor is mana. Malthiel, to clear the lane, is going to have to use a lot of mana, whereas Gazzo uses obviously none. Um, and I think eventually that should, that will definitely be a big deal for the mouth deal but good rotation I, I think a lot of teams don't do this much often on this map because of this early objective is going for the camps right away um, right when they spawn so that way they're pushing before the first objective or for the first beacon spawn nicely done we are going to see it prc get a little bit of an early lead that tassadar clear just so strong in the early game but not enough to really contest the point we are going to see the cats fight over it. There is that Sukov value, though. Johanna is going to put a big hurt on Rain, who's already used that trait, has to back away. Arthanel, though, very, very low. Stoic looking for blood early on. Yeah, forcing the first tap out of May. 
are still a pretty healthy team from Nexus Cats on the left here, so they're going to be able to hold bottom lane for a little bit longer. Gazzo's going to start fighting Mouthiel on the top, but actually going to give up just dismantling his turrets before uh, Mouthiel even showed up there. That's on Chad's hard win is top lane so far. I say that, and then someone dies bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you gotta look at the health bars, man. You gotta look at the health bars. Come on, Mr. Observer. Listen, I like to give the offlaners some some respect. They they always get ignored up there, alright? Gotta give them some respect. We always go up there for just like a couple of seconds. We call them the coolest and most attractive players on the team because they sacrifice screen time so we can have some XP. Yeah. Okay, Mark the Zombie is stepping in a little bit more, trying to find some damage onto Stoic, who manages to sidestep that uh, uh, triangle there from Deckard Kane. And Turd actually not doing as well up top as I thought he was maybe later on. Let's yeah, I haven't seen time. him actually do any type of duel yet. He's kind of just been passive playing in the lane, so hoping that his team wins the continues to win the 4v4 on bottom, which they are. So... Um, especially now that Mouthiel has the die alone, it probably does do better dueling, and Terra did not go the shielding, so it's really critical that he hits his Qs. Yeah. Ooh. They're gonna get to me. They should get brain. Yeah, especially she dives in he like that. Artha now chasing yeah. down. Mark Zombie, great flank that is going to be once again. May going down. Stoic takes a little bit of a chunk, is very low on mana, has to back up. And, you know, I guess it doesn't really even matter. Everyone talks about how important the offlane is. And it is very important up here when your four-man is just carrying away like that. Yeah, um, I mean, it's one of the big things. As long as your four-man is winning, then you don't really need your offlane to win, especially since they did have the off the Phoenix Rising had the last pick, so they had those options. Nice little rotations with from Arthanel since they had that May kill. Um, get some advantages elsewhere. Oh, yo, I thought for sure the Doctor was going to follow those Banshees through, but did not catch him. And as such, he gets away. Out comes the Blizzard. The team has to back out. Medallion burned for Mark Zombie there. They're going to come back in and try and take this. Uh, top, in the meantime, has been reclaimed as well. And now it's the full bone scrap for this objective. I think the big thing here, especially on two lane maps, is uh, Phoenix Rising actually has two heroes that scale. Uh, they're going to have infinite scaling from the Cassia. They have scaling from the Tastar and quest from the Stukov. There is the Sylvanas, which does scale, and that can get pretty dangerous. It will take a little bit longer. But we'll have to see if that starts playing a role into this one into this late game. Look how much damage they can pump out into that May each time. Like, Rain is just always... Whenever they walk up a little bit, I feel like they're about to die. <laughs> yeah, Orphia does damage, man. Especially once the trait comes out, you're just kind of a sitting duck, and it appears that Orphia and Sylvanas just don't seem to give a heck at all about the spell armor. Oh, you can swear here. Because... Okay, they don't give well, a hell. Yeah. They don't give a shit. <laughs> they get some. Silence comes out. Um, yeah, one other thing I want to point out is like nobody seems to ever step up for these rubies. Four gives pumping them out like a madman. And the team is like, oh, like, isn't that neat? What if we just let the kill get away? So that is going in favor of PRC. Slowly yeah. but surely channeling this point. I mean, PR yeah, so turn is going to have to hard back on top. top lane. Oh, here we go. Yeah, they just uh, Gazzle just tried to do some duel. Started to die too much on the Gaz the die alone, so opted to go back. Seeing that PRC now using their advantage on bot lane to get some structure damage, pretty good. Put the leading into PRC so far. Well, actually, heavily since they have so much of the objective. Are they swapping? Charge rotating. I uh, think yeah. like they are swapping. Oh, Rain keeps going in with no health. What are you doing, buddy? But he gets Joe the combos. He's going to be the first to fall down. And uh, yeah, everyone just kind of ignores him. And as such, Mark Zombie dies alone in the back. Asma Chan being bullied, though, by Orphea. Good swap, though. Uh, uh, come on, come on. Uh, oh, 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 my God. Oh, the Jesus. commitment wasn't there from either one of them. You saw them just kind of looking at each other like, like, do, do, do I want this? Am, am I think I they gonna... were both unsure who would win that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, really especially with Orphea, like, so much of that is comes down to her Q. And if, they, mm -hmm. if Mathil gets a big swap, being able to dodge the chomp. I would say, though, that Asmochad's dodge of that Q saved their life, right? Because the, the, the cooldown didn't get hit because of that. So Arthanel was not able to use it one more last time to finish him off. Right. Right. Are going to see them rotate back to the original four man, seeing as they are losing this bottom lane a little harder now. Uh, 
Bottom has been reclaimed by the Cats. Top, it's a little bit of a duel. They actually have the channel right now, but Asmund Chan has been able to push the turd out. A little bit more of a fight breaking out here. Mark Zombie coming back up. Big chomps coming out. The wall's really playing dividends, though, for the side of PRC. Racing in for the moment. Nexus Cats hold the bottom. Camp still available. Maybe we see somebody rotate off to do that. Level 10's just a smidgen away. Yo, did anyone else notice that Stukov went quest at 1? I love it. Yeah, I said that. You did? I, was, I don't I listen did. to you. you know when I was talking you. about all the uh, the late game <laughs> stuff and the stacking quests. But level 10's I mean, here, big combos. Stay a while and listen. Oh, Lots oh. of Wombo coming out from the Cats. It's a great Valkyrie, though. Orpheus is going to be the first to fall, so it gets very, very low. Great wall. Mark Zombie going to be the next to Paris. Archon looking for blood. It was a great Wombo. You saw lots of ultimates come out there. Wailing Arrow, Blessed Shield, stay a while, but it just didn't end up getting them really anything Ooh, except a couple of low, uh, low hit points. And yeah. Stork did a really good job avoiding the uh, crushing jaws. Walking yeah, it was just toward the enemy out of team. Rain. Right, but also like, walking toward the enemy team, it. right, to make sure they didn't get hit. Mm -hmm. I I just like that kind of awareness, even though it's counterintuitive in a sense. But look at that gravel bomb by Turd Herder. And then yet no one wants to walk on the point. Yeah, they have the snowball there for the uh, point secure anyways, unless they're using the medallion. I think, oh, but Mark might have had the wrong calls here by his team, not being on the same page. Is he going to go down? He definitely is with that last rights. Oof. Seems to be a little bit of a miscommunication there, and now there is yeah. a whole lot of work to be done for the Cats. This fort going down for sure. Team has to be careful here. Still lots of Zerg available, 50%. Stay Wild shuts it down. Gibbs, nice medallion, doesn't actually get stunned there. Arthanel, may, maybe? Um, oh, no, yeah, there it goes. <laughs> like 60 out there. So many of these heroes are getting away with, like, nothing on PRC. They're, they're really punishing this kind of just, I, I don't know. Some, sometimes the cat's just kind of running out doing. Ooh, combo. Oh, there we go though. Really nice Gravo bomb. Tassadar does a fall. They do lose the front wall here. The keep gonna take a little bit of damage, but it should be that the cats are able to clear this up. No problem. Finally get onto these guardians and uh, yeah, no, they don't, they're not gonna lose the keep here. Yeah, that's, uh, that was really good. Com the Nexus Cats are still giving good combos. I think every single time they've either had the grab a bomb with the Deckard root behind it. They've had the or they've tried to do the Orphea um, Jaws with the Joanna Blessed Shield. But the swipe has actually been the thing that's been saving PRC. If we've been noticing that is uh, Lamort on his swipe timing has been keeping Arthanau on the Orphea away from that chomp distance to not get those final kills really impressive now. So we are going to see the lane swap for real this time. Uh, Gazlo headed down to the bottom, seeing as uh, Top Fort was lost up in the top. This makes his life a little bit easier. It doesn't look like anybody told PRC that, as they're going to continue to come down and push here with the camp. It turned all by himself. Yeah, they may think... not have this for very long. Yeah, I think they might just hard push this. They might not even be able to defend. Um, still a rather really big wave. They can clear it pretty quickly with the uh, Orphea, but they actually might be looking for a fight. Okay, looks like everybody's just going to back off. Easy clears. Wait for them to get level 13s. Keep their level lead. Seeing the Malfiel just by himself go up to clear the top lane. Probably now it's going to determine on where Nexus Cat splits up their time. Since they have all five here, do they go for a fight? They saw Malfiel go through top. Actually, they did not. Malfiel they haven't seen him yet. the entire yeah. time. So they don't know it's a 5v4 yet. I'm the Cats. I want to play this really safely. They finally hit 13, so now they have the opportunity to look for a fight. And they see Malfiel. Uh, PRC understand this as well. They're just going to back off. They're going to let a little bit of push come out here from the blue team. But, ooh, virulent reaction comes out. There is the Cassia. A nice use of the Wailing Arrow, though. Cassia going to be the first to fall down. Orphea cleans her out really nicely. Out come the Wailing Arrow. Snowball separates two, and it looks like the cats are done. not done here anyways. Jeez, they keep coming in and coming out. I'm like, are they going in or what? But they're going to try claim this fort with the Cassia dead. It will go down. Nice turnaround from them. Who was that that got grabbed? Was that Joe? 
I yeah, know, it was I a yep. Joe got valked because she used her trait pretty early against the Stukov root. Oh, actually, it was she used her trait early, then got Stukov rooted, then got valked, which was good play. And there was just just enough time for her to get her shield back before she died, and then pick up some rubies. That's Please. what I thought. I saw her go in. And now they're going to come in and look for some more. Cassia has just respawned. Malthael is not in the lane here. So uh, not able to find anything just yet, but still exerting dominance over this bottom lane. Nexus Cats not wanting to give up anything more here. And they finally have an advantage. Yep, still level lead close, closer to 16th for PRC. Uh, Nexus Cats just now... PRC just now showing on the top lane, so see if they're going to back off here to make sure they don't get another 5v4 fight. Becomes a little bit more of the cat and mouse now of running around the map. Looks like Nexus Castle was looking something before 16, but nice I mean, play they had from their PRC combo. to back off there. They were looking. Yeah. They wanted the combo. What, I feel like every time that Chad shows himself on top, they're going to look for an engage there, which is the smart thing to do. So it's a good job from PRC to back off, disengage. Like, this is not our time. Wait for 16s. So we can play it slow. I really like this aggressiveness from the cats. They know that they still have the time to kind of come in and look to invade. They have this really strong wombo and they're using it. Some of these cooldowns, relatively uh, short timers, so they can just continue to punish and punish away. And even if it doesn't go their way, you know, things like the Blessed Shield, they'll be back up in 60 seconds. So it's okay to uh, come back and try again later. Now that we're about to hit 16, they are going to be in a little bit more of a panic mode, and it'll be PRC's turn to see what they can do with a whole level on the map, because they have to play so passively right now. Yeah. I was going to say, time yeah, just clear. I was going to say, Chat has to be a little bit careful. I know they're in that bush, kind of watching, but like, what, like Jinxie was saying, all their cooldowns for the heroes are pretty short. It's not a horrible thing to you know, use them all on one person. And if they're caught out, even by for a millisecond, they can be instantly deleted. Oh, yeah, I, I would I'd venture it's always worth it to use your cooldowns to kill one person to right, use right, all right. the ults, just blow everything. Yeah. Yep. A little bit of cat and mouse going on, almost being able to be 16s evenly. So we're going to have a little bit of... Okay, just some delays. See if they, they group up to try to kill the mouth ale, I think. I was oh, just don't show in the lane. I'd like to see them try and grab mouth ale here they have so much to work with and despite the fact that okay they're both 16 now so never mind but still they can take the 1v5 down 16s but it looks like they're just gonna grab the point and now like you said snag just kind of running around grab the camp see what's available wait until somebody shows try and get a pick mm -hmm. they've closed the gap on experience now which is good and again like they Phoenix PRC has really not been 5v4, has not been as 5 for a while, while as Nexus Cats have been 5 running around the map since probably level 13. Um, so they're kind of just running back and forth as soon as they show bot, Mouthio's taking up back on top. And they're just going to slowly clear both lanes until the, somebody catches maybe a little bit slower or a little bit faster. This is kind of those scenarios where you kind of have to just do something crazy. Like or a, aggressive you're just gonna be, Yeah, or That's you're just going to be stuck in the same spot. Maybe sit in a. I'd like have somebody sit in one of the rotation bushes at this point, where right, like you I'd, might not I'd like be the expected. Cat to sit in this right bush right here for our next rotation. Yeah, honestly, both can do it. Like especially if they right. have Mouthiel, they keep Mouthiel shown up top. Is another trick to do. Keep showing Mouthiel up top, and then sit in an aggressive bush like down he, into right yeah. next to the uh, right next to the objective. I guess in my mind, the, the cat. I know the cats are still technically losing this game, so I'm always oh, there talking is. for the underdog. Oh, there is no, the combo Mouthiel. though. <laughs> Master exploded. May going to be the next to fall down. Wall separates them from coming in and getting any more. Archon has been popped. It's getting absolutely zero value. Gets one shocky ray before having to zap back. Now we get to see the cats taking the boss here. And this could be it. 36% for They have the Savannahs too. Yeah, this is looking really disastrous for uh, PRC. Oh, yeah. I kind of I the chase around the overlay. Enough. To be a best of five, I need to do after this game. They yeah, had a best really good five. combo in that fight. I, it was honestly, I like how quick the reactions were. It was like they saw Malthiel as like insta pop. They, they, there was not really much of a delay of at all of from when they saw Vision of Malthiel and when they pretty much popped every ultimate. Um, like, like I said, as long, even they had Gravo Bomb, they had Blessed Shield, they had tr Crushing Jaws, they had Silence, like all done at the same time. And that's what you like to see. Um, get that first kill in the fight, and you can kind of win the rest. 
right. So now we're gonna see them push up here in the top lane with this boss. Beacon chugging away, so we'll have those Zerg here in a couple of moments. It's also gonna be going in the top lane here. So big, big push. Everybody back alive on the side of PRC. So biggest thing, they have the task. He has an insane amount of wave clear. Should be able to defend the brunt of the Zerg. But if those defend, if those uh, guardians can be kept alive by the cats, then they might be in some real trouble. They're even taking the camp. This is gonna hurt. I, yeah, pushing top defendable. lane. Boss, they've taken the lead. It's pretty tough. I mean, the Mouthfeel can't do much here without... Combo. There was Blessed Shield just went out nice and stoppable yeah. from Chad. But they have Archon, so that's something they can pop now. Use all the abilities to get the spell armor. I think they, they need to pop Archon in front of right away. They Lost might the get enough time. No, the boss. Good silence. There goes, yeah, there goes Mouthfeel in the back. That's probably game. There's the gravel the bomb. Catches two more with the jaws right afterwards. Lamart, somehow Lamort, skirts skirts their way out of there. But that's going to be game number one. Going to the cats. Very... <laughs> oh, turd. No, it doesn't go down yet. Very nicely done. GG. Wait, wait, wait. Fix my overlay. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Got out of that time. All right. I forgot. That, I forgot this is a best of five. I, got you I also thing. forgot it was a best of five. I'm gonna quit after the best of three. So, wow. <laughs> Toxic. Uh, there we go. Overlay's been updated. Winner. Well, final thoughts before we take a little break, everyone. Before we go into game number two. PRC was looking good. They were they had the early kills. They had the early the early wins on both top and bot lane. Um, but I think Nexus Cats kind of just started turning it on with the ultimates. They whiffed like the first team fight a little bit, just barely with Stoic doing the smart play and stepping a little bit ahead of that crushing jaw to not get comboed. And then I think Nexus Cats like, well, that's not happening again. And they just started slamming down all their alts on cooldown whenever they whenever they were looking at somebody. So. Once that started happening, it definitely went into the cats' favor. I just excellent team fights from both of them all around. We saw a really great use of the combo from uh, PRC as well. That virulent reaction into the Valkyrie nearly getting Johanna. Unfortunately, like you said, moving brick wall really hard to kill. And as a such, allowed Nexus cats to kind of come back into the game, turn it around, and then from there. Uh, it really was quite difficult for them to find that lead that they had and ultimately ended up costing them the game. Alrighty. Well, as chat chat has noticed, Gibbs did not die any at, at once, but neither did Lamort. So the supports always live. Always live. <laughs> Sacrifice right. the teammates to keep your keep your flawless. That's always the case. You and keep the, the, the supports alive. have the best way of doing that. Mm -hmm. You gotta keep the KDA alive. Come on, you know that. You know how it goes. All right, we're gonna take a quick little break, and then we shall return for game number two of this best of five.
<laughs> All right, we are back. <laughs> We're laughing because Snag's got his little wing ding or whatever the hell it is. I do have that, but that's not what's going on. What is it? I forget. What the... <laughs> it's a, what is uh, this it's thing a fidget. Fidget, like fidget spinner. Fidget yeah, fidget clacker. It's like it's 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 why I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just minding my own business over here, and you're like, yeah, uh, let's make sure Snag's here playing with this wing ding. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> well, you know, this is a different stream than I thought I was taking part in. Uh, Crescent, <laughs> don't be toxic in chat. I mean, PRC was no, dominating that's, that's game one solid, for a very long time. That's some solid ribbing. That's some solid ribbing. <laughs> Crescent's always got the solid ribbon. Yeah, th ribbing. yeah actually, Crescent is really good at that. All right, quick Vala ban here on Battlefield of Eternity. This was picked by... Wait. The cats. The cats, yes. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to go back to just chilling and let Jinx do all the work. My favorite thing in the world. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to talk too much because then I feel like I'm like, oh, look at me. I'm like, I'm so good at casting. All right, like, I'll talk oh. during draft and you can talk during the actual game. There we go. Easy peasy. All right, we have an yeah, Ana ban. Wait. The cats banned Anna. Banana. Yeah, I think they're. I think they're just banning favorites from PRC. They'll probably see a uh, Gul'dan ban, even though probably not good on this map. So they might change it up. Maybe a Chromie. <laughs> um, Stooky Buki was banned, and the Johanna. We. I think I know why that. No, the Johanna makes sense. Remember what happened last? Uh, not last week, but two weeks ago. On this map no. with Johanna. You were there. I don't. We cast it together. The Johanna completely disrupted their comp that they had, which I'm pretty sure they're going to try to go again here. Yeah, I mean, I guess it did. It does make it a little bit more annoying, especially since they got rid of the Stukov. So they're actually going to pick out the Chromie, one of the better racers, with that long-range siege, kind of like the Li Ming. See if Nexus Cats pick up the Li Ming. I haven't think we've seen them play Li Ming too often. It's usually been they favor the Orphea over that. The Orphan? Um, they do favor the, the Orphan. orphan. The gothic orphan. How dare you, Crescent? Corrupted by my time in the box. The B-Box is a joyous and loving community. <laughs> oh, are you saying that there, uh, Lighthouse, about what they want to do? I don't know what do? they're doing now. I don't know what they want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Hopefully know why you ban Johanna, then. Why do you ban Johanna, then? Because it's you throw Johanna, and then you make her use shield, and then you throw her again when she doesn't have shield. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, why do you ban her? Maybe they decided to just last minute change up the plan. Yeah, you know, that happens in draft. You get you get everybody talking at once and change you get in your own head. That's true. Now this you time people run in their mouths. Mr. Chad picking up the gas lord. They're on your he's mouth. gonna he's gonna run it down on turd <laughs> this time. And then you don't know what you're playing, and then your team picks random things like uh, yeah, Gower yeah. Lisco Volantes, and then you lose, and then they type yeah. GG and NGS chat. Like it wasn't like a total spanking, and you're like, all right, man, whatever. No, that, that, that wouldn't that happened happen to or anybody. Anything. Or you say like, <laughs> I want to do this, and your whole team goes, what? That's unheard of. And meanwhile, you got all these, you know, CCL and HCG people. They're saying, yeah, that's a that's a valid comp. Stop whining. Yeah, it's, it's almost like when they practice a lot longer than a random amateur team and they require a little <laughs> bit higher execution <laughs> than playing it once ever. That's, that's, it's called, that's how you team, practice. You win. Turns Ariel out, being be banned out. I, well, yeah, well, let's, let's talk about this game and then we can go to that one in the break. Uh, so what do we have here? We got the Ariel banned out. Um, interesting what they're showing. We got the Gazlo this time around for Asmachad. Sonia banned once again away from turret. I know it's one of his more favored picks. And now only I'm interested about is the ETC. We don't see a whole lot of ETC anymore uh, thanks to the nerf to his armor, which kind of makes him tissue paper when he slides in. Uh, how are we feeling continued with, you know, the Gazlo, the Chromie, what do we think? I, I still like ETC in the Garrosh. He's still probably the best tank in the Garrosh. Makes, if played correctly, you. Hug Garrosh, make sure he doesn't throw anybody, and really, honestly, never really throws you. Um, the Gazlord, I like the Sonya ban into one into Turd's favorite hero. Two, Sonya's actually really good into Gazlo because you can whirlwind through the Gazlo while charging all the abilities, heal off of his turrets. So good ban there. The healer pickups. Are, yeah, this seems like PRC is kind is like basically hard countering Nexus Cats in draft. They got 
The Anduin and pull for the garage, the ETC me. knockback. Okay, well, you know what? Never mind. It was a nice one, PRC. You still got three more chances to reverse sweep, but they have an Arthas <laughs> now. GG. Like, sorry you guys were hoping for a match, but this is going to be a stomp. Like, everyone just want to, like, take five. We'll be back for game number three. I mean, GG, that is fair, though. Next. They did pick. We did say they pre. They did pick Bruiser Arthas for the offlane, yeah. which is the correct use and of the And pre, like. All of us talking about how we want to do the caps. We did say if Arthas was going to be picked, that Jinxie was just going to run with it and hype it up like crazy. So, <laughs> no, no, that's going to take it away. Yep, Jinxie's got the whole game too. And Snag and I will see you <laughs> all again in game number three. We hope you enjoy this edition of Jinxie talking about Arthas. <laughs> oh, man. Uh... Yeah, oh, but. Oh. No. So. No talking. Okay. <laughs> go ahead, okay. Snack. Let's go. Don't ahead. make me cast by my. I wasn't prepared for this. I, mean, <laughs> I said it, but don't hold me to that. Like I'm one of the flakiest <laughs> people you'll ever meet. Um, Gazo into Arthas again. Hold on a second. Why do we I keep like Arthas talking right when the game pops up? You guys are killing me. I got my camera in the middle. Okay, go for it. <laughs> are we ready? We good? Okay. We Gucci? All right, yeah, on the left. On these teams. <laughs> Listen, we, this is what we do. This is what we do in they the mouse They can change house. heroes, Jinxie. Yeah. Uh, did I hit the display pop-ups? I have no idea. I think I did. We have Arthur now on the Rainer, Mark Zombie on the Garrus, the Doctor, Pepper himself on Kel'Thas. Got Gibbs, Try Hardy on his Deckard, and Turd on his favorite hero of all time, Arthas. All right, Jinxie, you can introduce PRC this time. Alrighty, over here on the right hand side, we got Ace on the Chromie. Lamort is going to be the Anduin. Stoic on that gray main. Rain is your ETC. And then up in the top, it's Asthma Chad on that Gazlo. Level one come from Chromie, getting the vision. I actually like this talent on uh, this map because uh, so much times when you're fighting over the, like you're just sieging and you actually don't know where the other team is. Oh, okay. Ooh. Oh, unlucky. Oh, okay. that was a good Ooh. CC chain. Alright, so that's what the cats are going to do. And if they do it like that just every single time, then uh, that, that that's what's going to happen every single time. How do you play against that? Like, hope your medallion's up. Anduin uh. pulled did not go off, did it? No. No. Yeah, I think a lot of people were not expecting. I think ETC is probably saying like, "I'm good, I'm good," and then didn't use the pull. It's like, "Oh wait, I'm no longer good. I'm, I I misclicked my button and it went the wrong direction." So, look like we are getting it invade on top a little bit. Put some pressure. Makes force pick that. Not going for the well. Gonna save that for a rainy day. Oh, ETC is back by the towers again. So, getting chucked every time by Mark Zombie. Yeah, this hopefully will be a little bit easier once ETZ gets level 4 and gets the improved knockback. So that way it makes it a little bit harder to throw him. Oh, that's not what you oh, want to do. Oh, yeah, that... Does he I not mean, have throw yet? I'm about to say. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm just... I'm not, I don't want to be toxic, but never slide into a garage. I like, mean, ever. I wasn't trying to be toxic either, <laughs> but I was going to say, if you're going to slide garage, make sure your aim is true. <laughs> because yeah. if you if you, <laughs> if, if you don't hit, that's exactly what happens, and that, that that's not toxic. Those are the facts. I'm oh, sorry. Listen, Crushinator <laughs> and Jet, one side of beef, please. That's yeah. good. <laughs> that's good. I like it. All right. Well, Rain is back. Uh, they did manage to get the camp, so pushing the cats in now. Up in the top, looks like Gazlo is having a. Um, I mean, they're doing pretty easy, even up in the top lane for now. This Chromie chunking, doing quite a bit of damage. Uh, top was taken by Arthur now. We are jumping all over the map as we touch on points. So yes, I'm trying. I'm trying my best to be camera cameraman extraordinaire. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I, th I think the PRC might get this in time. Might be a little bit behind. No, they'll get it. They'll probably, uh, they'll be hurt, but they'll be able to get to the rotation. I like both times Nexus cast, both teams basically capping this right on the money. You want to get it, just for anybody else knows, you want to get it when it's got about 15 seconds left on the first Immortal Spawn, or when your minion wave is just past where the camp is. Because that way they push with the big wave together, and get to be a little bit more powerful. 
both teams heading up to fight over this red immortal here. We're gonna see lots of chromium damage come out, and this is where Ace is going to shine. This poke damage is insane. They can ping you out all the way from Africa and not feel bad about it. Gazlo gonna help out with these stuns here. However, Arthur out with the exterminator, put in a lot of work, and Slide comes out, does not get the knockback into the stun, however, and there is another Garros throw onto the ETC. However, there's a number four, does not matter. Level four, not the number four. The number four with ETC just became as he goes down for the third time this game, thanks to the uh, Garros throw combo. Still a pretty good hero, it turns out. Top feet. Yeah, still a, still a thing you don't really want to do is slide into the Garrosh. <laughs> so we'll, uh, after it didn't work the first time, we're hoping that you don't try it for the third time. <laughs> but um, just let your Chromie <laughs> poke. Like just, I, I, just let your Chromie poke be passive a little bit more. <laughs> no, no, no. Look at Crescent. I'll slide Garrosh. What you gonna do? Throw me? Quote from Tauron who was thrown. <laughs> no. I'm dying. So. I'm dying here. <laughs> Yeah, see, Crescent's good. He's like, he's too witty. Crescent, we need you in the booth. You just can just drop your little one-liners every once in a while. <laughs> oh man, first immortal goes over to the side of the cats. We're looking very dominant in this early game. Going to be able to push with a moderately shielded immortal. I mean, the best you can ask for for the first one. Going to look to grab this early uh wall here see if they can't get any more than that meanwhile as the chan is gonna dunk on four turret down there oh my god mark combos. please he's got oh, a oh, oh, that was close. That was close. i liked it i like it though throwing it into the immortal stun because i actually would have knocked him back too he was waiting for the root to go off cause like being very patient waiting for all the, the stuns and cc's to go off throw him at the end of the root but then and then trying to throw him into the immortal that's very nice chef's yeah. kiss I liked it. The only thing I wish he would done instead was throw Gibbs into the ME4 to get a to get a death. Also because true. I don't want to. I, I want to see a big fat one here. For I did say that Mark was gonna play Garrosh and that he's gonna have to throw Gibbs at some point. So, facts. As much as Mama Gibbs in chat wants to root for him, we gotta <laughs> we gotta make sure that Gibbs gets dies at least once. Is Mama Gibbs in chat? I saw. Uh, she, she, I saw Rain's she wife is in chat. Yeah, she was Rain's, messaging Rain's some. Rain's better half. Yeah. I always presume. Oof. What? <laughs> always presume. I mean, of course, of course. I mean, we all Let's know like, for you, your soon-to-be wife is your, is your better half. I don't want to say her yep. name. <laughs> I don't I'm trying to remember what her uh, Discord name is. <laughs> I don't remember Crystal Killer. Uh, the Killer. I mean, yeah, she's, she's even got a better name than you. I mean, come on. Right. <laughs> More aggro. Oh, looking for the gank on Chad here. Does he get away? Ooh, I like the little bomb there. Stun. No, they do find the root, but don't commit as such. As when Chad is he gonna step up, try and. I mean, Stoic Ooh. is coming. They can fight this. Turd is yeah. pretty low on mana. The whole rest of the U.S. Army is showing up, and so unfortunate. <laughs> they just back out. Have to give up that camp. Great communication from the Nexus cats there. Not I'm getting sorry. caught out. Just the U.S. Army. Well, yeah, because they invade. I yeah, I know. Ah. <laughs> That's why. Like... This is this is this is way better than me actually casting. I just like to be the, the side show. This is fucking great. I mean, uh, this is really great. I didn't say the F word at all. Don't worry about it. Uh... Ooh, wins this work. This definitely Ooh, goes to. Actually, who does? Let's see. Yeah, okay. Wait, wait, do you think it's gonna be Gravel Bomb or um, Jazz Hands? Uh, oh, I think it's Gravel Bomb. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah. it called? What's it actually called? Was... Was... Robo Goblin? Robo yeah. Goblin, thank you. I don't know why. I can never remember it. Uh oh. Alright, another oh. throw on the Chromie. That is going to be the death of our was... favorite Bronze Dragon. Medallion the was up. Uh... Wasn't it? I think Medallion was up. It was. It was hard to pick. I keep forgetting to download all the obs. Oh my god! After every game, I'm like, oh, I should, I should download all the obs, and then after the game, I'm like, ah, oh, I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. When are you ever actually gonna cast? You're just gonna be with me. Make me do all the work. I'm, I'm still casting. Am I here? Am I not here? You're here. Okay. You're here, buddy. My, my existence was getting questioned. <laughs> <laughs> You hear uh -oh. best friend. Uh oh, trouble oh, brewing. Oh man! As the 
chat. Oh. It's gonna go down. It caught out. Oh, and the LOL well, spray. <laughs> well, that's just, that's just a cat good. special. Or yeah, that's the uh, toxic zombie. Uh, I think the they were they were hunting it. as well. They were like they were not even anywhere, no intention of going bottom. They were hanging around outside the route around that camp for a good bit after that immortal spawn. Mm -hmm. With the Cindergosa picking Hell the opposite lane. Yeah, alright. Well, I mean You did say Arthas GG go next. I, I quoted a five minute <laughs> game. We're at eight and a half, so like pushing on the keep. I mean Immortal pushing down in the bottom. Grey Man gonna clear that away. We're gonna throw is on the turd, not give, so not all of our premonitions have been correct. So uh, these are our hopes and dreams. Uh <laughs> Crescent, again, the F4 is not allowing hots. Fun. Wow. Yep. Wow. Uh I do like crushing it though. Uh let, let me know when Snag has a solo cast. I wanna make sure we all watch it. I wanna see this one. <laughs> it's only been a year. Or two, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. We've been, it's been a, a long for while. a while now, huh? Where does the time go? I haven't solo are. cast in a long life. time either. I, I don't miss it. I hate solo casting. Wait, have you ever solo casted? I did for a while, yeah. I hate it. I remember, I think there was a time I had a murky soundboard. It was great. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm here like, wow, it's been a minute since I casted with people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jinx is a brave one. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'll solo cast. It doesn't matter. Actually, wants to talk for that long by herself. <laughs> Who does that? I know what I like, and I'm just like, eh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would get so nervous that I'm just talking over everybody. Uh oh. <laughs> Here it comes. What is it? The U.S. Army? Is this is a gang. Is this an invader? Or is this a gank attempt? What's that? What's that actually? It's a gank. How do I? How do I? Oh, use, how do I use oh, that properly, looking. Jinxie? They are oh, they're looking. looking. Oh, this oh, they, like, they oh, Lord, they're coming. Then. I guess that'd be like, like, like Viet Cong warfare. They just show up, they kill you, and then they disappear. Coming that, out of the bushes. Is, is that, yeah. Coming out of the trees. Is, is that offensive? I feel like it might. I don't know. Be. Is it? Can we get a ruling in chat? Because if it's offensive, it we offensive? won't say that. I have Press no idea. If you're triggered. Right. Press is, is yeah, type one if you're Viet triggered Kong by that. <laughs> uh, I just hit another alien. Ooh. What are they? Yeah. It's just an alien attack, right? They just mosey oh, on yeah, in there all of a works. sudden. Turd. Uh oh. Ray, the grand CC in there. <laughs> oh man, the whole combo comes down. Nobody getting picked there though. Everybody just presses their R button and runs away. Safe taunt, which wasn't used. Was Wait, Garrosh so dancing I, I want to go back for a second this. in there? While Turd was in that stasis, the one button he was spamming was his spray button. That was the first <laughs> button he spray he was spamming inside that uh, stasis. I'm fairly certain Mark Look Zombie was again. dancing in there, by the way. Uh, Kael'thas is a oh little far forward. Oh my god, what a forward. good taunt. That was actually yeah. clutch. And... Oh man, Gibbs saves the day. They're running. How, this is... how did no that one die? How did no one die there? What is happening? There were actually so many good plays during that. Like, so many little things mm -hmm. that happened in that. Sides, that was purple. insane. Oh yeah. man, we could have talked about any of them, but instead... And yet we, we didn't talk about any of them. <laughs> We're talking about a spray. Uh oh, I mean, he's the behind. Big too. There's a throw. No, light bomb's still. Up. Light bomb's still up. I'm kind of waiting for it. There are so many times it could have gone down. There is the uh, gravo bomb finally comes out. Chastise hits onto uh, Mark Zombie, but he is a Garrosh, so just as strong as when he went in, despite having a little bit less health. Uh, Cat's finally in a rough spot with their immortal. Have to step up and defend. Time Walker's pursuit comes out. Rain looking to step up, get a little bit of damage. And however, he is just a single ETC. Chromie throwing down those sandblasts, but uh, not doing the a slight race. Ooh, they're looking. There's the light bomb. Gets two of the three. Nice. Good. That was a nice throw by Garrosh onto into the taunt. Grayman gonna go down. So and. Nobody, no, nobody noticed Arth now. Uh, I thought for sure that was a mosh pit, but still eight seconds left up on that. I think uh, <laughs> Rain thought that was a mosh pit as well, but then uh, realizing they didn't have the cooldown does end up. Yeah, that was, it would have been a good slide. Ooh, the doctor going for that solo kill on Asma Chad. Almost got it. We got a fit pretty health. No, I guess not pretty healthy, but you know, we got an immortal. They got down the bot about. lane. Oh, no Arthas nearby. He'll be there. No mosey on over. 
I think this will probably be dead before then. Oh, wait. Oh, man. Uh, how did he die? What happened? Are they what happened? Chromie, like, oh. combo, <laughs> I guess? I had him barely off camera. Yeah, that's what did I, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was following you guys, so... Uh, looks like we're trying to invade Fort Knox now. Not a hundred percent sure. Uh, I guess but, I think they're just uh, yeah, getting some soak, getting top late wave. Getting ready for 16, continuing to push their uh, lead here. 16 to 14, rough spot for PRC to be in. However, they do want to wait for their Rainer before they go in, so they're looking pretty aggressive. Turd showing right. up first, but bullet going out. Oh yeah, no! Yeah, face checks the bush. I don't, yeah. Yeah. I don't think you can face check that bush, buddy. Yeah. Got the turret herder special. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So oh, man, I was waiting PRC for it. I was like... still no keeps down by the way. So their PRC is while they're not not looking so hot, it could be worse. Yeah, I mean, if all they need is these little bit of wins here and there, just to stay alive, make sure they don't lose any keeps, and then, you know, it's late game hot, so you get a team fight, you push 100% Immortal into Excuse two me, keeps and win. what game is this? What, dead game? No, Hoots. It's Hoots. Come on. Oh, my bad. <laughs> my beat. <laughs> we're, 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 we're more important than Hoots. Just come on. Come on. I showed up here, like, ready for, like, 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 like a Jinxie Tetra cast. Is... Yeah, you are you are wrong. I, I was so ready for it, and now I'm just sitting here like, "Lol, guys, low Pepe hands." It's like my <laughs> contribution. This is we have some of these team fights. We have fun here. This is the mouse yeah. house. Oh no, it's been an absolute blast. I'm really enjoying it. We're just <laughs> PRC take this camp here, starting to really pull ahead. They uh, caught up to that two level deficit fairly quickly. Found their 16. They're really that able time. to take this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, like it only takes. He's one, learning. So <laughs> yeah, uh, check the bush with the howling blast. Uh, I guess you're gonna chill challenge again. It's At least while. when throughout these games, we have gotten some. You know, the the heroes, the players have uh, increased their abilities. They uh, not sliding into the garage. Yeah, oh, I got a combo. Uh, oh, Under doctor. The doctor. So very How does Daddy. ETC go down first? What? Oh, he's just made of nothing. The doctor with a beautiful use of that uh, arcane barrier level one talent ends up staying alive. Unfortunately for ETC, he doesn't have that. Ends up just getting chunked into oblivion. The Phoenix ripping him to shreds. And right. now halftime show achieved once again for the Cats. They're so dominant in this series. It's honestly impressive because from the draft, I'm like, well, this is going to be. As much as I wanted the Arthas to win, I was like, this is nasty. Like, I feel bad for them, but uh, <laughs> nobody told them they were getting countered. I need to add that to my promotional material, what Crescent just said in chat. Jinxie was ready for a very professional cast and instead comes to the Mouse House. Can we put down some flyers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, don't say it like that because now I feel like a jerk. Like I'm just like what? looking down. This my is accurate. Nose. What are you talking about? This is accurate <laughs> as hell. I'm a nice uh, lady. They've learned their lesson. Uh oh. Oh, they're coming in from behind. Looking for the big plays, even talents. No mosh. Nice throw. There's a Ooh, taunt. Very There's a light bomb. Done. There's a dead gas lord. Ooh. Is that a two for two for nothing? Nothing special. It might be three. Oh, yeah. they're looking for it. Got the root up. Oh man! Wait. Oh, just barely. Oh, Ooh, that, what happened? Rip. <laughs> Do you remember the oh, rule? Watch this team. Mark's got this good garage. Oh, I mean, we know goodness. that we've seen it lots of times, and his Mark's been known for the garage. But the decision making, a like, quick decision making with garage, which is always key because you have to you have to flick your mouse a lot of directions really quickly. Uh, of where you're throwing somebody, it's not always just into your team. Throwing somebody over the wall to go to the rest of your team, I'm just really always impressed with Mark's garage. Right. Um, I'm sorry, I keep laughing at Chad. <laughs> <laughs> That's We're game number two. All the good plays that happened. There were so game many good two. plays. There was a really good play. Going over to the, uh, the Nexus cats there. <laughs> 
Uh, beautifully done. They look for the wraparound play. PRC thinking they had it, but really quick, uh, successful turnaround. Beautifully done. The taunt, the stay wild, and listen. The light bomb came out. Got a couple of stuns off there, but in the end, it just didn't matter. KT throwing down that big burst damage. Uh, secure the fate of two of them. Finally, like you said, uh, uh, quick decision making by Mark Zombie. Finishes off Stoic as well. And then from there, it was just kind of free. Uh, right remaining members couldn't save the Immortal and the Syndragosa and everything else pushing in. This time, it's a little bit, a little bit, a little more yikes. 11 to 2 in favor of Nexus Cats. Uh, I had to, we had to point out still no deaths on the supports. So support players are OP, obviously. Gotta get that KDA. KD. Things that uh, really only things that they get is the assist. So I mean I think it does count because obviously kill death assist, but you know I, I, now we got we got we got to step it up and get the supports into the kills. <laughs> um, real quick, I'd like to make some more chat shoutouts because they're much better at this than I am right now. The old Kalethos tank strat. Pop barrier, get <laughs> beamed in the head by a potion or two. Easy. Good job, Crush. <laughs> and then Professor Bobo reminding us all that Syndra does not, in fact, work on the core. <laughs> what <about> damage? <laughs> what <about> damage? <laughs> oh, I, I, that was really well played, though, by the uh, cats. I will say, I think, I, I mean, whenever Mark Zombie's on Garrosh, it really does feel like he hard carries those games, though. Like, the way, like his, the yeah. way he does his throws... Uh, whether it be to save his team or you know or to get a kill the way he does you know how he's patient with the taunt it's just it's just like i feel like you have to ban it against this team that game he was actually just like 1v9 i mean the amount of times i would see some plays and i'm just like what are you doing like turd stuck in the middle of you know the the the, the war zone his first reaction is to hit the spray button and Mark just like, 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 like the, like exasperated father of a truant toddler is like, all right, like, come on, like, let's go home, saves the day, wins him the team fight, gets the immortal, just, just really, really well done. Commendations all around for him. And uh, hopefully they ban it game number three, because this might be, you know, quick, easy series, if not. All right. With that being said, we shall return in a little bit for game number three of this best of five. Let's find out. <laughs>
Okie dokie, we are back for game number three of this best of five matchup. We are going to Volskaya Foundry, picked by the Cats as the uh, as PRC is elected for first pick yet again. I was a little surprised by how game number two went. I'm going to let them know we're ready, actually, though. Uh, based on how game number one was, like, for, I, I mean, for example, I'd say, you know, I think Rain hard struggled against a Garrosh in game number two, against Mark Zombie's Garrosh. And in game number one, they looked pretty, you know, really good on the May, making, you know, smart plays and smart positional movements. And then I feel like maybe they're just not used to playing against Garrosh? Definitely left a little bit to be desired there, I think. It could just be an inexperience on the matchup, you know, uh, maybe looking for that level 10. Because after, if you get thrown, like, 1 through 9, it kind of sucks. You're like, well, shoot, I guess I just die. After 10, you know, you, you've delivered your team a free four-man mosh pit. Obviously not the case with uh, Mark's Zombies uh, Garrosh. Hopefully he gets a little bit better this time. But, yeah, it was a rough match for him. He died, like, six times, which is never good when you're the tank. Yeah, that armor nerf is, every time I see it, it does look a little bit worse and worse. However, I mean, there's been other times where I've been seeing ETCs that still seem just as powerful as they were before. Slightly squishier, but, you know, if ETC, as long as ETC does what it needs to do, gets the slides, gets the disjointment with the knockbacks, you know, that's really yeah. all you need. But and I then, wonder if we're going to see some similar bands this time around, or maybe some new bands with, uh, with some respect. Cause I feel like the uh, combo was still there, right? I think they had like the light bomb, they had ETC mosh. Like, I think if Rain just is able to stay alive a little bit longer, that could have been a very different game. Right? Yeah. Did they? Did was the mosh just interrupted every single time? It was. Because it was interrupted a lot. Okay, because every time I was like, "All right, here's the mosh," then I would look and it was on cooldown. I was like, "Oh, I didn't even see it go off." Yeah. So I think usually you would see like a slide with the light bomb on top of that slide, and then you light, then you would uh, mosh right afterwards, right? I think that feels like the right right way to do the combo. Right. But it did feel like there was no slide to engage. It was more like, "Oh, oh, he's been chucked," <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeet. <laughs> yeah, there were still, I mean, there were still like a lot of not, uh, interrupts on Nexus Cats last game. Well, they had the, the, the Garrosh, Stonia, not Stonia, mm. Garrosh, Kael'thas, Knockback from Rainer, Sleep from Deckard. Yeah, I mean, there, there were so true. many things. There's a lot. Well, Stukov, Suki Buki being banned out, Johanna being banned out, or her, here we go in game number three. All right. Is the respect there? Do they care? What are we going to get the next ban? <clears throat> Gonna be, it is right. This time, though. finally getting rid of the guys, though. It's nice to see a variety in bands. Usually, you know, you have teams with the same two bands or the uh, the old Diva Gazlo band coming out, and then one team's banning something crazy like Lunara and, I don't know, Lili or something, because one player is just like a random god tier Lili player, and then it gets through game number three, and you're like, oh, all right, like that that's why you ban Lili or whatever. <laughs> This is the time to mix it up. You gotta get the comeback. Nexus Cast can be a little loose right now, to, since they have that two game lead. Phoenix Rising, they had the Cassian game one stoked, looked really strong with it, had good Valkyries, had a lot of pressure that you want to see with the Cassia. So uh, I think a strong pickup right off the bat. But uh, Nexus Cast, let's see if they want to go down that Garage Avenue again or switch it up with the tanks. No, don't have the Joanna like they did in game one. We'll have to see what they pick. I really like the Cassia. It looks like they are going to go ahead and stick with the tried and true Garrosh and uh, Deckard. Three and oh, or three games straight with the Deckard. No right. variety here. One tricking <laughs> gives the one trick. I didn't even think Deckard was good anymore. Like, nobody picks Deckard anymore. He's still there. I mean, I, I'm learning. I think with the like, comps like, they like, it's still very viable. Yeah, Brightwing has just been such a powerhouse lately that like it's kind of just been bright wing plus extra <laughs> right yeah that's typically what we see and i mean like clearly like gibbs has made me a fan i mean just hard flexing on everybody here also uh saving the day and i'm gonna hear about this later in, in chat about you know how good he is and we're gonna have to bring him down a peg but for now I'm, yeah very gibbs strong is hard Get carried by his team <laughs> fact Malthael gonna be banned out. Her does not want to have to deal with that once again. And then again, on the side of PRC, we have the Chromie, we have the Anduin. Uh, that Chromie was really, really hurting. So hopefully, if they can keep their tank alive a little bit longer, we'll get to see more from that. Because this time round, you know, cats are gonna have to stay 
in a set box. And that's like Chromie's dream. She can just ping on them in an area and they either lose the objective or they just get shot at, you know? Uh, I'm, I'm with Crushinator in chat right now. Are they playing the same comms? Because these comms are very similar. Stoic changed, changed out the Rainer for a Cassia. But like, there's been no changes so far, though they will need a new offlaner since they had Gazlo last game. Well, so we're gonna get Kael'thas. Not oh, I'm last. sorry. What were they last game? Because that Rainer was on. No, you're right. Last game. What was Stoic last game? They weren't Cassia. Uh, Stoic was Grey Man. There you go. Oh, uh, Grey Mundo. I mean, the the cats like like they know this is working. Like they are a hundred percent fine to keep playing the same comp. Like. If it's it ain't working, broke. Yeah, exactly. PRC needs to do something else. Like, you know, maybe this time, like I said, on the point, it'll work a bit differently. But yep. you're banging your head against the wall. Okay, here's a Deathwing. Ooh, and we I like it. Again. I already like this. All right, all right. You know, if you're worried about being thrown, pick a hero that can't be thrown. <laughs> so, not bad. Go with ATC Great. again. Gonna have the redemption. Gonna maybe have a chat with his team, figure out what went wrong, what they can do better. Don't slide in, and we're good. <laughs> There's some slanderous uh, statements being made in chat right now. Uh oh. That's what you all know. That's what you all to what, know. What correct statements? Uh, first of all, no. Valimar <laughs> is the best support in the B box. Like, <laughs> what is he talking about? Just getting that bright wing meta. That's what he sets. So picking up the Lunara. That's getting some Lunara. poke damage in. Being able to run around a little bit more. Real I'm quick. Curious. I don't know why they did the Lunara this time. They got rid of one of their stuns. Um, has some slower damage. That's pretty easy for Anduin to heal off with the... Uh, what is it? That ordinance? What was that thing? That wave of light? No. That's Uther. What's Anduin's oh, ability that goes star. out and comes back? There you go. Yeah, Divine Star. Real quick, though. Uh, Lothar, Carling, Verk, James, Tetcher, and Harking, Giants, Bane. That's a lot of, that's a lot of names. Thank you all for the follows. Welcome to the Mouse House. We're going to go to into the game. We're in game number three of this best of five matchup. Right now, the Nexus Cats have a 2 nothing lead on the left. In the blue scrubs, we got the Doctor on the Nara, Turt Herder on the Blaze, Gibbs on his one hero, Arthur Wow on the Orphan, and Mark Zombie on the Gary. <laughs> and on the red team, Phoenix Rising <laughs> Citrine trying to start going up with their, um, you know, the reverse sweep here. We got Rain on the ETC, Stoic, Cassi Stoic on the Cassia, uh, Lamort on that Anduin, Ace on the Chromie once again, and now Asmo Chad on the Deathwing. I like the the booty shake by the Deathwing, by the way. That's why I was, I was the angling. dance. Yeah. Oh yeah, I He's don't so know if you cute. got my camera, but I'm in the middle dancing around a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Yeah, we got Jim. All right. So I'm curious to see if this is gonna be maybe a roll swap from PRC because I'd like to see that Deathwing get in the garage's face because otherwise we could see something very similar. But now we just have you know uh, Deathwing in the off lane. So, so far, it seems to be working out fairly well. Also helps that these lanes are probably twice the size of that yeah. of the BOE. A lot lane. more room for error and to move around on. Oh, Ooh. man. Still lots of damage coming out from the cats here, though. Turd, gonna have a rough time into a uh, blaze. I mean, neither one of them are really gonna do anything, but that's kind of the problem, I feel. I think that Deathwing hard wins and it should push the lane, right? With the with the lightning breath or whatever the hell that thing's called. Yeah, I mean, Turd can't really do much. He can kind of, since the Deathwing didn't go the uh, the AOE, the, the W ability at level one, then um, Turd can kind of run around the side of Deathwing a lot and just, just get auto attack ticks onto him, but it's not gonna matter too much, like, it's gonna be tickling. Um, this as a chat should be able to get some auto attacks going in and get the heals. Mama Gibbs saying, "Shake that ass in chat." Respect. <laughs> Respect. Oh man. Both teams correctly going for the turret camp on a cooldown immediately. There's a little bit better uh, speed coming from PRC here, so they're gonna have a little bit faster rotation. I don't think there's not really going to be much they can do about us as long as that rain is paying attention. Nice knockback there. That's what I want to see with from the ETC. Yeah. I I mean, 
I actually like PRC's draft in this game three better than the cats, honestly. As long as uh, Rain can make adjustments from game number one, like like right there, what you just said mentioned there, like if, I think if they can make those adjustments, I think they have a m better comp for this map. Yeah. I agree. I'm not quite convinced on the Lunara pick. It seems kind of random, especially into the Chromie. She's so so squishy. And if they don't have eyes on that Chromie the entire time, like one one combo is just gonna tear her apart. And then you're in a 4v5 for the rest of the fight. Also, the delayed damage into the and win just feels kind of rough. Yeah, at least I think Maybe Divine Storm. Me. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Lunara either. I, I do like Lunara as a hero. I think a lot of times she's kind of slept on because she can pump out a lot of damage with the right build at level with the with the burst at level seven. Um and she can since she has that extra mobility, it is harder for Cassie to stay on there, harder for ETC to get on there, and harder to hit with the Chromie. Um, but I think it might be able to be healed up enough. Yeah, with the Anduin healing, that's what I, what I do agree. But I've seen Lenara's just all of a sudden just dismantle somebody, right? And also right here, oh, that was a nice, nice, that was a nice pull by Lamort. Yeah, really good pull. I, I was going to nice. say, I really feel like the winning hand could still be Mark Zombie on this garage for this game. Mm -hmm. So first objective, teams usually want to clear off those top uh, mercs, give, you can give up a little bit of point pressure just to get those mercs on top lane cleared so that way they're not pushing into that top fort. It also leaves you the availability to take the heal camp whenever your uh, team rotates maybe a little bit too poorly. Um, but this first pressure on the point going towards the cats. I mean, they do uh, all. Yeah. Built by the Deathwing so far, actually. I was expecting more of a hard solo lane attack build, but. They're going for. They're gonna go for that on the mosh pit then. The the whatever flame breath. Yeah. What's it called? Uh. Molten flame. Yeah. There's some good chokes like right there. To be able to get that off on. Oh, it's and so uh -oh. hard to fight Deathwing on the point. He is gonna lose most of his armor plate. However, heal pulse gonna go over to PRC. Mark Zombie very very low. Has to back away. Chromie not able to finish him off unfortunately. Uh, everybody off the point, 58% going over to the blue team here. Everybody going to just tap reset. This is going to be in favor of uh, uh, red team as we come through. They have two of these items. Both turret camps available. We'll see if anybody gets anything more. You know, maybe the cats want to see it a little bit of point, grab their turret, come back in. So they're at least on the same items here. here. They yeah, but have some burn that cats still have that immediately. Yeah, yeah, right when they picked it up, they just wanted to oh, make sure they didn't they die with it. it. Whoops. Yep. But since, oh, nice big damage from there. But I was, I was about to say, since the cats were constantly were standing on the point first, uh, I was, we weren't really seeing PRC push them off the point. But actually, the cats ran into them and it was like, okay, we'll just we'll give you the point anyways. And I like this player going for the turret now that they have that uh, hero advantage. Going to opt out of some experience in the other lanes to make sure they can get some item numbers on them. You get some toys. <laughs> He wants some toys. He wants some toys. You want to play all the games. Yeah, Crescent says the Lunara pack feels like a flex on him. Well, so everybody from the Nexus Cats does have the Lunara spray, the haha. -ha, so I don't know. Maybe I mean, it might be them, their. We've seen um, them play in the Nar before. I think it's just a. They do. No, they, they've definitely play. played it. But yeah. it's also kind of like their. I don't know. I guess pseudo mascot, even though they are the cats. Slide coming out onto the Doctor, gets a little bit low in the back. Mark Zombie also feeling the wrath, has to throw Turd to safety. Gibbs trying to heal everybody up with the potions right now. 99 to 99, and we might see PRC pick this up Double here. They've turret, got like three it. turrets, there's so much damage coming out. Turd once again incredibly low. Garros trying to make it through with the slowing sands, just doing the Lord's work. Not able to save it. First objective going over to PRC. You, you see Rain, Rain's adjustments this game have been really good into that garage. Right there, I saw them kind of walking and moseying, moseying by uh, Mark on the on the garage, forcing Mark to throw him away, and then he did a slide this time. Whereas yeah. in game number one, they were sliding first, asking questions later. Yeah, so I think I there's know. a big difference between on threat of this game. Like, the the threat and the scariness of the cats was much stronger from on last game. This game seems like with the Deathwing, with the Cassia, they're a lot more scary to the cats, and there's gonna be a lot more throws away than mm -hmm. throws in. But I mean, like, but beforehand though, we were still seeing him slide in first, right? 
Like I think that's yeah. still a good adjustment that we're in them that they're Definitely. making. So I, I'm very I'm very excited for that. I like to see a player make those adjustments at halftime, so to speak. <laughs> For, for the rest Ryan, of the series. six times will do that too, yo. <laughs> <laughs> but he is doing a really great job. It has been great zoning, knocking everybody back. We saw that Orthia kill earlier. Uh, great slides. Earlier in that first fight, got the slide onto Lunar, which kind of shut her down, allowed the Chromie to follow up. Level 10 for both the teams here now. We have Bunker coming out from Turd, and I definitely think that will help on these points. However, they do have to be careful of the Deathwing, because same thing kind of Back in the day, before Deathwing was in the Nexus, we had it with the Diablo Lightning Breath. You can just kind of burn it down, and then everybody is a sitting duck. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure that Deathwing... Okay, we'll see the next next two picks, but I think they're going to go the Q build, which is a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Yeah, and you got to think about the Q on any, all of these points. The Q covers, like, three quarters of the zone if somebody's standing on it. And then the alleyways that get, like, the next point being top, right? If anybody's in that top little section above that, I don't know what you want to call that little block, that you can't get away. You can't get away from the Molten Flame there. So um, going into that Q build, and then also having a Chromie slow in any of these choke points, making it so they can't even run away that fast, is huge. Yeah, Rain doing a really good job, making sure that he's always knocking back that Garrosh. Um, but we've seen it a couple times, and we've we've pointed it out a couple times, with Chromie plus Deathwing, even though they're both kind of like this long range, the big... AOE zone control just tends to be problematic. Right, and that is my concern as we continue on, is it's just going to get better and better and have more tools to deal with the cats. And Garrosh, he wants to get in there. And if he's in there, then their PRCs are just like, all right, you know, cool, we'll just kill you then. It and... definitely is in the air. Ooh, yeah, there they come. And now, there's the mosh pit. Out comes the bunker. Stay wild and listen, put an end to that real quickly. Salvation. Oh, oh it's still counts. Oh. That's a big old salvation. Out comes that healing pulse once again. And still, oh, this must Just... be so frustrating for the red team. Nice, nice disengage, Wait, though. Wait, um, one for the red team. Why would that be frustrating? Every time they get the heal pulse, they have to immediately use it. I mean, like, oh, like you yeah. get it, there's, there's no right. value really gained. Well, at least they won. They got the experience from taking the camps. That's something. Yeah. That, yeah. Bold more, salvation pick. It worked out there. I think there's I only guess two. You got Blaze and Garrosh. Yeah, I guess. It's yeah, the Blaze just barely missed right, the because she didn't go like, Jaws. Just... Yeah. Terminal when they bring it online. Are you saying Blaze barely missed the stun there? Yeah, like, Turd was just south of the Anduin. Like, just barely missed. I don't think it would have changed much. The stun might have changed, might have helped, but uh, it was pretty big to have the Salvation there along with the Eternal Feast. Mm -hmm. I mean, but Blaze's stun feels like it's got, like, an 8-mile radius if it hits one it hero. It does. So. <laughs> like I said, he just barely missed all the heroes. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Kat stepping up onto the point one more time. Both on even talent tiers, despite a little bit of a level lead in favor of uh, PRC. Deathwing staying down, turd rotating up. And no contestant just yet. Everybody is soaking around. 16 is still so far away. What are they looking for? They're making yeah. sure they have their items. I mean, Deathwing for always sure. has fly. He can go up in the air, get up there fast enough. Um, they'll probably, they'll probably see another 99 fight, which is always risky because, you know, if you mess up, then you've straight up just given them the protector for no reason. Uh, but right now, since they see Lunara bot, I think we would definitely want to see PRC attack that point now. Yep. It'll take them a little bit longer to get out there. Definitely will be able to land. Yeah, it looks like cats are going to step off. That's good. Good job. I want to see, I want to see... A massive engage with the Deathwing drop on the back line here. Nice unstoppable sad, there from our zombie. <laughs> Alright, we get the throw now. Does not get the taunt off. There it is, finally. There is the priest. Great unstoppable. Oh, Great leap. Oh. Not going to be enough, though. Lunara point is not finished today. I feel like they're just barely oh, out of hurt, Anduin's though. range there, most of the most yeah. engage. He was, like, trying to for a while, and then you know, got taunted, and then Anduin got uh, disrupted, but... They've been trying to save the ETC. 
Not so, like cats. Go right ahead. <laughs> no, I was gonna I was just say the same thing. So this time gets the chance for the Nexus cats to get their protector and see what they can do with it. They're gonna middle this time round and try and push that down. The whole team is here to defend. So can they get much done here? There's a little bit of health, but Fort is going to fall. First Fort of the game going over to the Nexus cats. Unara hops out. Orphea gonna get in this time round. And most likely due to the fact that Unara does have that nature's calling. So wanting to get that little bit of extra damage onto the buildings. Lunara taking the percent hero damage at 16 now. Uh, after somebody has three stacks of nature's calling, probably give it some way, another way to help deal with Deathwing. That's usually, usually that pick is with the... Uh, the level 16 is somebody slow, they do extra damage. So I got that makes sense. You can't slow the Deathwing. Are we going to see maybe a little bit of a change up? <laughs> uh, I, I was curious if we're going to maybe see a little bit of a change up in who has to deal with the Deathwing now because we have seen Asmachad rotating around for this last uh, uh, objective phase. Um, did push down some of these bottom towers, trying to get an advantage there. Is the doctor going to have to be, you know, kind of on Deathwing duty now, making sure that he's not pushing things down as opposed to uh, turd? How much does this fort You're have? So 400. Low this game. Yeah, only one to two. This, it was ETC, that first death on ETC was the first one for the cats. Wow. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's the thing about Volskaya. It can. The only time that you really are fighting is usually right on the objective, and it's usually only when somebody's just about to get 99 or just about to, to win the objective, and then you kind of go hard in. And so you either team wipe, get team wiped, or kill nobody and be like, okay, we'll just trade health and clear the immortal or clear the protector with everybody alive. But PRC now is just controlling the map with items, having four turrets at their disposal. Oh, good oh, pull, no. save okay. the day. <laughs> that delayed slide after he got pulled, that's funny. <laughs> you oh, notice that under the roll for, uh, on the, under the two for Ali OBS? Or is it this in-game, I forget, actually. Um, for what? <clears throat> well, I'll talk about this later. We got a big engage uh, going on here in the top now. In. There is the Salvation coming out. Big Molten Breath. Garrosh going to go down, not able to get into the bunker thanks to the Chromie slowing sand. Everybody else from Cat's going to be able to get out. And they finally get a heal pulse that they don't immediately have to drop. Big days. Big Christmas present. <laughs> we did see a turret used there, though. So they still have only four oh, items, you know? Uh, they, they looking. <laughs> they looking. He's gone. Um, no, also, they actually, Rain had to use a turret there because otherwise they wouldn't be able to pick up the healing camp, which would have been <laughs> even funnier. We finally got the chance and nobody can pick it up. Anduin's role swaps between tank and support on there. And I'm trying to figure out why tank. Wait, what do you mean? So if you go to, if you hit control 2, you see how it has the roles on there? Anduin has support on there and then it swaps back and forth between that and tank for them. ETC makes sense because it does the same thing for tank and support. But why is. I don't know. Why does Anduin yeah, have a question. tank option? <laughs> tank Anduin, you know? He, he could run in, he could throw out the Divine Star, he could catch it at level 16 and do damage. He's got a root, like... I don't feel like you guys are sold. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I, he does well, have Salvation. Yeah. Oh, this uh, yeah, time, I like the their, their change-up with both the ultimates and the hero. The Deathwings has been, I think, played a crucial role in this comp. And the Salvation has gotten a lot of work. Anytime Feast has gone out, the Salvation's been there, so it does nothing. Uh, I think Orpheus... I don't, does Orpheus still get the trait stacks if they're in Salvation? I don't think so. Because that was always a big thing, because it gives her her trait, so you can get like a bunch of auto attacks off. I, don't, I honestly don't know. I think at level 20 it probably for sure doesn't, because I think they're invulnerable, right? If you get the upgrade. Yeah. Actually, maybe the feast does not give stacks. It says only basic abilities. Well, so they're, maybe they're wrong altogether. The bottom point. Trying to get that camp. I don't know. Um. Oops. 
Taunt. Taunt comes out. This is a big one. Stay a while and listen. There's the Valkyrie. Does not connect onto anybody. And Cassia ends up falling asleep as well. But here comes Asmatad, and that kind of puts a quick end to everything. Cassia does end up falling. There is the uh, level 20s have been hit. So there goes the uh, Bolt of the Storm for ATC. He gets out. Cataclysm finally being used here comes down. And uh, yeah, only Stoic is going to go down in this fight. Uh, was Salvation still Wow, I'm actually surprised down? ETC lived. No, yeah, Salvation's up. Yeah, I'm surprised. Bro, I, I'm pretty sure it was that. up. I don't, yeah, I'm surprised he didn't pop it there. Because there's no threat for a stun. Yeah. To save the Cassia. That's close. I mean, the first big break for the cats, honestly. I mean, not first big break. They also had that first Punisher. got the two forts. Um, but the team fights have not been going their way. Um, so, pretty good break. Still low kill. Two to three. Only killing the Cassia and ETC here. Right. Uh, right, Hector, though, yeah, I know it's damage taken, but, like... It's like, why, why does that show up? Usually why it's not does that Anduin long. have that? Like, Deckard doesn't have it. I mean, arguably, t Deckard's tankier than Anduin. Deckard's a bruiser, too, in case you didn't know. He is. <laughs> Deckard's so tanky, if he's able to just pot himself for pot forever. I, that's, that's just what... That's, that's my question. Like, I... I get the role what it's saying. I just don't know why Anduin of all of all heroes has that has that dual selector selector on there. It's just weird. Looking like we're getting a little bit of party bush. Yep. Oh, oh there's a slide. The rest of the team wasn't Brian. there. Oh, that was that was a little bit of a slow reaction, I think, on that. Got out the healing. Oh, nice blink. blink. Nice blink. Yep. I mean, I feel like PRCs looked really good this game, yet they can't get any push. Yeah, unfortunately they were winning that early protector, which doesn't really do anything. Um, they did lose that second protector, losing out the two forts. And but they've been getting all the heal camps. They've been all the heal camp fights, but that's it's in between the important parts of the game. I think the big thing has been just that the cats are, for the most part, they've been alive. So everything that PRC has the opportunity to do, whether it be with the items or. Um, you know, any of the oh, that, that, bunker. that was uh, nice by Arthur now. Yeah, but they had to go in that bunker or else they're gonna get stunned. That was a great, great uh, no, duck I, I in 100% there. agree. Oh, good Gibbs. No. Oh, so close. Oh, <laughs> good Gibbs. throw. Oh my god. <laughs> the Valkyrie oh, was god. there. He's still alive. Zombie's still alive. What? This is like a scrum. Holy crap. Oh, one for one so far. Lunara looking at Asma Chat. That is going to be the end of Deathwing. So now we're at two for two. Both front lines going down here. ETC still survives. There you what go. Lunara value. <laughs> Lunara value. All you Lunara doubters. All right. You know what? Starting, starting to see the, uh, <laughs> the, the pick there. Start, start, starting to understand it. I'm the level 20. That Valkyrie didn't hit Gibbs. It was like so literally good. next to his body and it hit Orphea instead. <laughs> and he still lived like Orphea, fun, fair, balanced hero. Self-healing, by the way. Feels, feels so fun. Uh, really, really nicely done. Arthur now getting in that bunker, saving the day for himself there. Great use of just everything by Mark Zombie on the Garros, getting the throws to save everyone. And went a little bit late on that salvation. I, I looked, I was like, is it down? I'm like, all right, now here we go. Now, any second. <laughs> and then it came out. But by that time, you know, Cassie had already gotten down. Deathwing couldn't really do much about because nobody can really do anything for Deathwing but Deathwing. So uh, maybe, maybe just a little bit wanted to make sure they weren't getting hit in any of that, uh, any of the CC from the cats because that was a confusing fight. Trying to figure out where to start and call that. So I can only imagine what it's like to be playing in that. Mm hmm. Yeah, I like the the calls from the cats there in that little downtime that they had. Uh, they didn't act, they didn't actually know that PRC was on the heal camp, but taking the advantage that they couldn't see them anywhere else on the map, went for the aggressive turret, uh, trying to keep in their numbers of the toys, and then getting that free keep to finish off. So they will have that catapult pressure. They still have the global with the deathwing, um, so it shouldn't be too much of a big deal. But it, it gives them a win condition. So. PRC not killing any forts yet. Even though it's even on kills, it's been, I felt like it's been relatively even on all team fights, but so much more pressure coming out for the cat. Starting to show signs of life in this uh, 
uh, late game here, having that extra damage on the Lunara coupled with the percent damage, really putting a thorn in the Deathwing side. So. Hey, what did the damage damage numbers look like? We do have Lunara with a 51, followed not too far behind by the Chromie and Deathwing, actually. I mean, I Deathwing will say. Deathwing is taking a lot more damage. I feel the Lunara has been doing a really good job of getting that added, added extra pressure on there all the time. I feel like the uh, PRC is constantly lower than they I think they would like throughout all these team fights. Yeah, I think this is really going to come down to the sanctification, or not sanctification, the uh, holy yeah, ward salvation. Salvation. Um, because it, it, it just completely negates all of Inara's damage. I mean, she does do a lot. Like, you see that half health in there? Uh-oh. Mark Zombie very low, gets the taunt off, and oh still lives! Goodness. Oh man, Rain yep. going down, Chromie going down, Anduin gonna get into, does not, oh! Okay, never mind, finally Protected, uses it. by the way. <laughs> the Molten Flames are huge. <laughs> they actually did so much damage there. Oh man. And they're actually gonna win out on these trades. Kill Gibbs! Oh my god, go zombie. <laughs> Fucking zombie. <laughs> why does he not? Why does he want to win the game? Like, come on. <laughs> Sorry. I actually hate him. Uh, Anduin still also flawless. So I, I'm happy about that. Can we get an entire yeah, especially that team where, where fight. neither that... support dies? That'd be great. Especially that team fight with Anduin being stuck in that little choke point, just being pelted by Lunar and everybody else. They actually end up getting the protector. I was just gonna have to run away with it, but at least they got it. Yeah, 62% uh -oh. on the core of PRC. They had to go back and uh, deal with that a little bit. Uh, it's gonna, they're gonna run it down. North North, no forts have been taken on the side of the cats here. So finally, One's gonna go down, and they're using this to team fight instead. They know they can't press in too terribly far. Otherwise, uh, we will see Lamort finally fall, most likely. So I don't know. This is like a, this is level tw twenty-four minute protector. Those do start doing some damage, and they're I mean they're weakening them. Yeah. Now they got the rest of the team five here, the five v five. I feel like they could have. I guess they're trying to get the lane pushed out, but I feel like they could have done a better job prepping that maybe. There is a mosh nice pit. Unstoppable. Nice oh, unstoppable. Close. I know. When we can hope. The Doctor, though, oh, doing man. serious work in the back line with the Lenara, and down goes Rain on the ETC. Ace will we follow next with the Chromie. No, Lamort! Save yourself! Get away! Get away! Get away. Lamort! Run! Yes! Yes! Okay, good. Okay, I'm happy. Nice. <laughs> That's a two for nothing special, though, in favor of the Cats. But the most important part was that Lamort survived, and I'm very, very happy about that. Just barely, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, even though uh, Lunar does look like it does a lot of damage, Anduin can heal it pretty well. He'll be able to save himself there. Um, maybe not able to save the rest of his team, but as long as he saved himself. Anduin does <laughs> sneaky good, you know, healing, particularly late game. Yeah. Kind of being a little risky here. Doing a oh, nice the, with the kitty cat, cat spray. spray. I like it. Um, <laughs> a little greedy with uh, kind of being nearby. He gets dismounted by accidentally and kind of get chucks. I feel like Deathwing's doing a lot of damage. What is he up to now? Oh, still beating out, still losing to the Lunara's spread damage. She did go the uh, splintered spear, which is trying mm. to spread out that poison. I mean, Arc oh. now is really good on that Orphea. Oh. Like, there's just so much damage that goes out so quickly, and I feel like the Doctor is following up with the Lunara. I don't know. I feel like there how, do, so how many does how does PRC like fix these engages at this point and get a kill? I don't really feel like there's a whole lot of target focus, I think is the biggest thing. Like, Arthur yeah. on that last fight should have died. Like, there, I was I was watching him the entire time, and I couldn't even speak on it because I was just like, oh my god. And then Turn was able to sneak up with the bunker, help him get out. But you see so much, there's a lot of damage on several people. We'll see, you know, Gibbs, uh, Mark Zombie, Arthur now, they all leave with 30% health. If they yeah. just redirect that, then maybe we see somebody finally die. Yeah, they need to look for a big Valkyrie. A lot of times, the, the, the thing to look for is Anduin doing sleeps. You have Stoic on the Cassia, kind of hang out on the sidelines. Once you start hearing Deckard, you know, he's, he yells when he 
trying to get people to sleep, which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Not helpful for putting child to sleep. And um, so once you hear that, you just, you throw the Valkyrie out, get the Anduin. He doesn't have the everlasting pots, so once they get rid of that healing, they should start finally finishing people off with the the. Um, First of all, he has a yell. He clears his throat. Oh no, Mark Zombie saved by the deck of oh, pain, though okay. there is that protect, wow. DC gonna go down, oh no, no Lamar, Lamar finally dies! That Kelsey was an absolutely well. sick sleep yep. by the doctor oh, man. playing as Deckard, because I can't give, what's his name, true props. <laughs> and that was honestly just a weird fight, too, like there was nothing to gain there, no advantages on either team, just happened to go... Almost looking for the big mosh pit, but since uh, Gibbs was on that backside with the sleep, like they almost had the choke point. All the ideas were there, but uh, the dream is dead. Winning it out. The support went down. Oh. Yeah, it is true. Well, PRC almost had it, but they're impenetrable to the team fight. Stone to dust does go down. That's game number three, and the series going over to the Nexus Cats. That was really well played by the Cats. After game number one looked really close, and they just. I feel like they made the adjustments just to dominate game two and three. <laughs> uh, I'll have to like re-listen to it. How clear is that actually going through the mic? <laughs> it's, pretty, it's like fairly clear. Is it? It's, it's, it's just grainy enough to be meme -y. Like you can still hear <laughs> it and it still sounds nice, but like it, it, it's just enough to be good. Uh, first of all, Bobo, I do not sleep in Gibbs's uh, pajamas, okay? I have my own personalized just underwear of Gibbs that I sleep in, <laughs> all right? It's too hot to wear full-on pajamas. This guy. Well, I'm looking to see if we get an interview, but while we wait... um, We'll go to our, we'll go to our user lobby, actually. Uh, that's that's five, by the way, Jinxie. <laughs> we have okay. our favorite lobby that we go to. Sounds good. Oh boy. <laughs> they. <sighs> we are joined. <laughs> well, I'm happy that we're joined by Arthur now and Mark Zombie. But sadly, we're also joined by McGiblets. I didn't realize Gibbs was coming. Oh, okay. Just pick him. You're the captain. Just kick oh, him. Like, I got the power. No. Don't... All right. Aww. We are joined by Arthur now and Mark Zombie of the Nexus Cats. <laughs> what is up? <laughs> GG's. GG. Well played. Um, real so quick. Oh yeah, you go. Yeah. You go ahead. You ask better questions than I do. I ask bullshit ones. So no, I, was, I, I turned said it multiple times when you know going through either other seasons and going into these this playoff of this season that the cats have not made it through the first round of a playoff. How does yeah. it feel now? Oh, it feels great. I, it, it feels really good, especially after I think what was a fantastic performance from my team. So. I, I think we're walking on sunshine right now. Yeah, and like get, getting ready for the match, it's like literally this is the potential climax to our esports endeavors. Get making it this far, you know, we haven't haven't gotten past the first round like you said. So now DJ only the boss room left. Yeah, we we uh, <laughs> the two two uh, remaining original Nexus cats here with Turd Herder being so close to an original Nexus cat, but. Oh, yeah, and then that's the perfect amount. Definitely made the right decision to kick Gibbs. We need OG <laughs> members here right now. You guys are on your way to the the super finals. At, what is it called? Just <laughs> the div Grand final, finals. the grandest finals. How does it feel to know that you are one match away from being grand champions of Division C? Well, um, it feels good. We we. We got the conference finals today, but we still have some work to do. So we're not done yet. It feels good. I think we'll take our victory for it tonight, enjoy the day, and then look forward to the next match. So we're not we're not quite ready to celebrate, but well, we will be. You want to do your questions of the games, sir? 
Yeah, go on, go ahead. You you two go ask questions. Right. I'll I'll ask one uh, later. So Turd's undefeated on Gaslow? Is that is that the play? Yeah, I guess he is. Fourth fourth game Gaslow, easy ball. Yeah. But um the real thing the real thing for game one, it seemed like you guys were kind of struggling in the early game. Was there anything that that you guys had to change up or talk out during the game to kind of flip the switch in that game one on Braxis. Do you want this BJ or what? Uh, you're, you're the expert on, uh, okay. Keep, keep, keeping the heads together. Yeah. Um, I wish I had like all the heroes and drafts in front of me. I pretty much forget who I played immediately after the game, but Joe, it was Joe, Joe. versus May. Oh, Joe. I got excited. I thought you said Joe. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man. I played Joe. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I, I think we, at this point in the season, at this point playing together, we, we, we know how to keep it together, af- like, in the both in the game and after, like, you know, if we lose the first map or something, we, we're pretty good about staying level-headed and just trying to be logical the whole way time. Um, so I think that's kind of what happened here is we, we were behind and we tried to just soak, not get picked off, get play the map, delay the objective when we can, and then just... I think slowly we kind of just chipped them down and there was a little bit of like a turnaround point. I don't know, but I, I definitely felt once we had the momentum felt pretty in control. Anybody else? Jinxie, go, go, go. Uh, we'll go in order <laughs> like that. How about that? Easy. For sure. Uh, yeah, you guys did a great job. And then did you just kind of carry that momentum from game number two? Because game number two was super, super dominant. And I mean, especially you, Mark, like on that Garros. So I was oh. telling the the guys, you just kind of 1v9'd everybody. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, some teams decide to ban Garrosh. And um, some teams decide to not ban it. And I think you guys saw <laughs> what happens. Dang. Some down. teams decide to ban uh, Garros and some teams decide to lose, you know? That's where I thought he was actually going to say. I was right. Yeah. For it. Uh, Missed opportunity. No, that, 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 there was a couple couple moments. Um, you know, PRC played phenomenally. Um, whatever, like the scoreboard set or anything like that, the structure is like still ever, like so many fights. It was a really true challenge to our focus, I think, over time and just continue to make the right decision. But there was, there was just tons of moments where either i got out or saved some within the fray um and just just barely so that was wild yeah i felt like most of those team fights came down to a clutch potion from mcgiblets who played deckard all three games i'm sorry mcgiblets and uh <laughs> just moment to moment plays that made him broke every team fight they were all low kill games yeah for the most part yeah, definitely. And then, uh, uh... I was gonna say for wow. game number two, I remember at one point, uh, because look, was it game number two to game number one? It was game number one, wasn't it? That's precious holdout. Yep. My favorite, my my favorite moment was when you had to go top lane to help out, and you and Malthael both kind of seemed like, who wins this one v one? Like, <laughs> and they barely <laughs> got away with six health, but. Your like, your Orvia play the entire series when both games one and three was just so strong and solid. And I was, I mean, like you, is that, it's like your favorite hero though. I think right, it feels like or it feels like your favorite mage because I know Doctor usually plays the mages, but when Orvia, whenever Orvia's on the table, that's that's your baby. Yeah, or- Orvia's my favorite mage. I, I don't know if she's my favorite hero, but she's definitely up there. I. I I feel like I have a lot of control of the situation whenever I play Orvia. Which is why I like her. I had a question on game two, but I was hoping Turd was going to be here. Um, Because I wanted to ask him how fast he was spamming his spray button whenever he was in a chromie stasis trap. Because I saw it. I saw it. (laughs) The first thing that happened when he came out of chromie stasis trap was a spray. (laughs) And I'm thinking, that means he's spamming that key. Not something else to save himself. I don't know what what portion of Turd's APMs are hitting the spray key, but I would think it's a a pretty bigger bigger percent than you would imagine. Yeah. He's he's fast to spray. Fast to spray. Turd, fastest sprayer in the West. (laughs) Or East, I guess. Yeah, this is East. I, I didn't notice he did that. I, I wish I saw that. 
I don't know. If, I don't know if Lighthouse caught it on this because I'm. I have my own. Um, um I think I caught it, but it's hard to tell. Yeah. But I caught it. I saw it turn. It happened like twice, or at least maybe maybe three times actually. But I know it happened at least twice. The first I mean, time it happened, you know, like he he was taking a lot of damage. He was in the time trap. He gets the spray off. Uh, he gets the end of the fray out. He's fine. And we're like, all right, you know what? Fair enough. I'm sure they're talking. They're communicating. He's uh, Mark's on top of like, it's fine. Like I've got you. And he's like, all right, like I can spray. The second <laughs> time, he's sub 25 percent health in a chromie trap in the slowing sands into the fray has already been burned and then somehow mcgiblet saves him with a potion and he gets out and i'm like all right like you know what like turd we need to have words because he he's 10 percent health he's dying and he's like you know what i'm gonna do like i'm not even gonna medallion like i'm gonna spray and, and then he lives like like that i don't know there's no god. <laughs> see, whenever Turd plays, he plugs into the Matrix, so he knows what's going to happen. You you should see him in Storm League. He plays nothing like he plays in NGS. D different guy altogether. Turd giving away the secrets in, in chat, saying that the spray button is actually more important than the medallion. So it's a good thing they're getting rid of it. Uh, I actually think he has a macro that connects to two. <laughs> medallion and spray? Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> All right, I have to ask this question. In game three, there was one point for you, Art, that you narrowly avoided the Deathwing stun and hopped into that bunker. And I think that kept you alive for the rest of that fight. And uh, I just, I, did you, I guess, my question was like, did you, were you anticipating that coming? Because it, it felt like such a close call that you ma barely made in there in time. And I was kind of, I was really impressed that you were able to get that and avoid that stun. Yeah, kind of so saved Turd's, that team fight. Yeah, Tur Turd was uh, Turd's excellent at calling out his ability. So he was caught up bunker, and meanwhile, I am um, having so much pressure in my butthole. I'm creating diamonds <laughs> hiding in the <this> corner. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he came in at the nick of time, and I managed to get in there. And so yeah, it, it, it was communication on Turd's part. Uh, a lot of our team comes down to just how good we are at communicating with each other, but especially Turd, because to be honest, if you didn't talk, I'd have no idea either. Offlaners are a different thing. I don't even scout the other team's offlaners. Well, yeah, you got it. You play your own game. So it's... Dang, it's offlaner is not important for scouting. So I mean, it is. It's just... It's <laughs> I, think, I think it's just that Arth knows that Turd's going to lose it anyway, so he has, he has to worry more about it. <laughs> <laughs> but he's going to come in with the team plays. That's all that matters. <laughs> Oh, uh, actually, no. Doctor's right, though. Uh, leaping over the Mosh. The, the Lunara play was actually top-notch, the, especially in the end of Game 3. I was I was actually commenting during the cast that the the, the com combination of the Orphea and the Lunara, like, they didn't seem like they could stop you at all in Game 3, particularly late game. What's funny is I almost shut that down. Uh, I was kind of iffy on the Lunara, and ultimately, I, I, I think the call was the we told Doctor to trust his gut. No, that's, oh, that's what a his bad gut call. told him. Yeah. <laughs> that's a really good call. What are you talking about? <laughs> that was a lucky call. Uh, <laughs> all right, Snag. I know you have a beef with Mark, though. Oh. What did I do? What? I like beef. Yeah. We have a beef with Mark. Both of us have a beef with Mark. I oh, know, yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, I think it was probably late game three. Okay. Uh, Gibbs is <laughs> between you and the enemy team, and you throw Gibbs to safety. What the hell? <laughs> the one time and now i'm getting i'm getting messages no saying that he's flawless like come on right yeah you could have thrown him it's... away like it messed well... it up i don't understand <sighs> trying to win the game over here jeez yeah that that's basically i do everything in my power to increase my percent chance to win and you know you guys know gibbs unfortunately sometimes i have to save him <laughs> but that is unfortunate. Play, that is unfortunate. We play other games. Any anything else than that? He's getting left behind. Um, Alright, that's fair. I, I, I'll have to. I'll have to maybe gank him in WoW or something. There you go. <laughs> Alright, Jinxie, do you have any more questions you'd like to ask? Uh, I think I. Thank you. Snag. I'm good. All right, I'm out of questions as well. So, do the two of you have any shout outs Anything you'd like to say before we let you go? Sure, I'll go first. Uh, shout out to you guys for casting us. 
I'm really excited to watch the professional cast with Jinxie, Snag, and Linehouse. Observe. Oh, no, it's it's mostly the Jinxie and Snag. It's much better than usual. Oh, excellent. <laughs> um, shout out to my team. I'm, I'm really proud of you guys. Made it to the grand finals. So uh, just one more week of not playing Shadowlands as much as we'd like to. Um, and uh, that, that's pretty much it, Mark. Uh, yeah, so shout outs to our coach. Uh, August, oh, yeah, from, uh, former Chicken Nuggets fame. Um, shout out to This Is Kovey for putting together Phoenix Rising, an old buddy of mine who I brought into the NGS community. So always cool to see uh, how the relationship unfolds, like meeting each other, playing randomly, and then bringing him into NGS, building up Phoenix Rising. It's awesome what he's done. So big shout out to Kovey. Um, Shout out to Brenda, my cat. <laughs> the, and... the real MVP. Yep. That's all. Cool. I, I got one more thing. Any more, anything to say to the possible grand final opponents? Uh, yeah, I, I got to be honest. I have no idea who you are. I haven't even looked at Sea West. <laughs> well, I can't even, even, can't even hype yourself up. It's yeah. not my team. <laughs> so, I mean, wait, is it? No, it's not. We lost almost every single game. We suck. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so close. Uh, good luck. Have fun, I guess. Yeah. Mark, you got anything? So nice. Uh, I'm, I'm basically the same as BJ. I, I kind of just, I rarely know our opponent. I don't do anything out of the game as far as uh, scouting goes. I just show up and play in the game. So. Shows up, locks Garrosh. Uh, chat is win. requesting a shout out to Pam. Is that Gib is that Mama Gibbs? Yeah. Uh, yeah, shout shout out to Pam, of course. Okay. Is she watching? Uh, she was. Yeah, she uh, was. Turd's mom, Turd's mom she was swearing Pam. in chat. Oh, nice. It was fantastic. And Turd's mom is Pam. Yes. Oh, no the double Pam. The, the Pam Pams. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to both the Pams then. Would that be spam? Yeah. Also, thank you guys so much for casting. It's been a pleasure to Get, get have, have awesome NGS like Heroes back. Heroes Esports back again is a dream come true for me. And I remember when HGC was canceled, it was very sad. I was working like a 16 hour shift and I was halfway through it, almost in a different state, and uh, got the news. I was like, okay, well, sweet. <laughs> now time what? To, yeah. Time to stay here until 3 a.m. and then uh, not watch Hots when I get home, I guess. Aww. But. NGS is awesome. So happy it's back that we can have casters and play play the game that you know we all love. So there you go. Take it away, Linus. Well, congratulations to both of you. Good luck in the grand finale. Finale, and hopefully Thanks, maybe guys. the cats can just take it home and get that 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 sweet sweet victory. So you can all retire if you want. <laughs> all right. Take care. Appreciate you. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one. All right. Bye, guys. Well, I was going to say, that's before we sign off, I'll go down around the room. Uh, Jet Snag, do you have any last thoughts you'd like, to, like to, to mention? Well, congratulations to the Cats for their first Coastal win. You know, it's always better to win the Coastal because that's the people they actually play against, you know, week to week. You know, nobody actually really cares about the Grand Final East versus West. It's a completely different thing. Um, so congrats to that, and good luck in the finals. Jinxie? Uh, yeah, just big shout out to them. Thank you so much for having me on, guys. It was really fun. Uh, I appreciate a more just chill, laid back uh, cast than what you know we typically have to do. Where everything is so super professional. It was it was a blast. So thanks for having me, guys. You are welcome anytime because it means I have to do less work, and I love that. <laughs> I love that so very much. The one thing we learned about Linehouse is that he wants to do less work, but have all the credit. I want. It's on well, his no, no, no. well, I mean, it's only because um, I've built this brand of the mouse house. Okay, how dare you, sir? So everyone you're knows basically about like this. the like the person that's building the little mouse maze, and you're just watching all the little mice go through. Yes, Is that what's going on here now. You said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you both for coming and joining me on this cast. Appreciate it very much. It was a much higher quality than usual. Thank you, everyone, for coming up watching this uh this mouse house production with 
I don't know what to say anymore. I'm tired. I did do a hydrate for you, Turd, about you know twelve minutes ago. I didn't. I didn't say it out loud, but I have my water next to me. Also, thank you, dropping babies, for the follow. Welcome to the mouse house as well. <laughs> dropping babies. I, these there's some great thank names. Thank you for dropping babies. I mean, hey, that's the that's their name. They got some great names. I love it. Thank you to everyone for showing up to watch this. We will be applying for the grand finals. We'll see if we get it. Crushnator. Wink, wink. Uh, <laughs> That being said, thank you all for joining us. Good luck to everyone else the rest of the season for NGS, and you all have a wonderful evening.